how's it going? In today's tutorial, you are going to learn how to paint this beautiful dot mandala design on an old bottle. Now, I am using an old wine bottle, but you could just use whatever you have. You do want to have it good and clean and free from all the labels. If you have a hard time getting the sticky residue off, I recommend Goo Gone. It removes all sticker residue. And you do want to make sure that you use some rubbing alcohol to clean your bottle off to ensure proper paint adhesion. You can follow along with today's design using just some simple homemade tools is what we'll do. Um, some pencils, a q-tip, and a toothpick. Now you do want to make sure that you get the cotton swabs with the paper stick and not the plastic stick because it just doesn't work the same. So on one end you want to take all the cotton off and you're going to be left with a nice round little tool. And then on the other end where the cotton is still left on you want to dip it in some acrylic paint. This is Deco Art Americana acrylic in white. It could be any color. And then you just want to smear the paint down the shaft of the cotton swab. It doesn't really have to be perfect or anything. And you want to let that sit and dry. I did put a little bit of paint on the other end just to kind of hold back any little fuzzies that might be there. And then I'm using some kneaded eraser to hold my bottle in place. And that works really well. Now, for this project, you are going to want either a multi-surface or an enamel acrylic paint. They are both able to be baked on, and you just need to read your bottle. Both of these are like 325 for half an hour in the oven. You can also let them air dry, and they will become permanent after like a month, and that works just as well. So now we've got our tools all ready. And I go to make my first dot here, and I'm just going to put it on the seam of the bottle. Um, and I realize that this is just not going to work. The glare, <laughs> I've had this problem a couple times recently. Um, the glare on the bottle was just going to make it difficult for you guys to see. So I did frost my bottle, and all I did was just spray it with a matte varnish. You do not have to do that. I just did that for the video, and that's it but it works either way. All right, you want to start off your design making your center dot. You can just use anything that's flat and round. I'm using a larger pencil eraser, and you can clean off the acrylic paint with just a damp cloth. Now you want to make a ring of smaller dots going around your center dot. What I do is I start at the top, and then one to the bottom, and then one to either side, like a crisscross, and then I place a dot right in between each of those, and then another dot in between each of those. So you're going to look for a total of 16 dots around your center dot. And I'm using the toothpick here, so it's really small dots. And you want your dots to be as close to that main center dot as you can without actually touching it. But if they run together, it's no big deal. Just move on. No one's going to notice that. All right, next up, you're going to do a row of blue dots. This is called Calypso Blue and you're going to be just offsetting the previous row of dots. So you're going to place one blue dot with the toothpick right in between on the outer edge of two previous dots. You're going to do that all the way around. I kind of like to stick with the crisscross idea because it just helps with spacing. It just kind of keeps things nice and neat and lined up. All right, for the next color, it's called True Blue. And this time we're gonna use the stick end of a cotton swab. And you're basically gonna do the same procedure. So just line them up with that seam to start with. So keep them all nice and straight. Do your crisscross. Again, right in between, and in between again. And it should just fit perfectly. And then you can just clean these off as well with just a damp cloth. The next color I'm going to use is called Apple Green. I'm going to stay with the cardboard stick or the paper stick and do the same thing again. And now I'm going to mix two of these colors together to get uh, more of like a deep teal. So I just mix a little bit of the Apple Green and a little bit of the true blue paint and I've got this nice teal shade here and we're using the cotton swab end that has hardened and believe it or not you can actually reuse the cotton swab as well 
just kind of dab it off on a damp cloth and you're good to go. Now I'm going to fill in a little bit of the spacing with very small dots with the toothpick. So I went in between the green with the green and between the teal with the teal. And then the next color is called True Blue and I'm going to use a regular size pencil eraser. And I'm just going to be placing dots again right offset of the previous row. However, to fill in the space this time, we're going to be making these little white lacy bridges around these larger blue dots here. So they fit right into space. And what you do is you dip your toothpick into some white paint and you make your first initial dot on the center of the outer edge of the larger dot. And then you want to dot all the way down continuously down to the base of one side of the blue dot. Then re-dip your toothpick into the white paint, re-dot your first initial dot, and then dot all the way down to the base of the other side of the blue dot. And they make these beautiful, lacy looking white little bridges, is what I like to call them. And then for your next row, I'm going back with the regular size pencil. And this paint is called Coastal Waters. It's a really, really light teal paint. It's beautiful. And then in between each of those, down towards the base of it, I'm going to place one smaller dot with the thick end of the cotton swab. Going back with the Calypso Blue for the next row, and this is the large pencil eraser. And you're just going to stick a dot right in the little divot uh, in between the larger coastal waters dots. And then around those, you're going to go back with the toothpick. And just like before with the little white bridges, we're going to do little lacy green bridges. Just to add a little splash of that green back in. So again, start the center outer edge. Go all the way down to the base of one side. Redip your tool. Redot that first initial dot there in the center. And then continually dot all the way down to the base of the other side. And then to fill in some of that space, I am going to be adding a few of the dots of the paper end of the cotton swab. Just whatever fits, you know, you could do another green bridge around it. And then at this point, I'm going to try to make a solid ring of dots around this main design here, this main mandala design. And I'm just eyeballing this and trying to get it, you know, to be a nice uniform ring. Um, if you had a compass, you could use that to make a ring around it, or I actually sell a silicone stencil in my web store, and that would work perfectly for this. It would just lay right across the bottle for you, and you could draw on some guidelines that way. I will put a link in this video's description below for my website, the Dot Art Depot. It is your one-stop shop for anything and everything dot art. <laughs> Basically, I'm just going to keep on um, making rings all the way out to fill out the bottle. If you can offset the rings of the previous rings, it makes for a really nice tight design. Uh, but you can't always do that, and especially with just five different sizes, it makes it a little more difficult to to make you know tight rings you could stop at any point and it's going to look absolutely fantastic I just wanted to fill up every single little bit that I could so you know when I first started painting with dots I guess it's been about two and a half years now here I am a mom of three little ones I had just gotten through a divorce between homeschooling and baseball soccer and all the other fun stuff that moms do I realized that it had been years since I had taken any me time and not much in the way of like crafty things or painting or drawing or sewing or any of the things that I really really love to do well besides the crafts and stuff that I would do with the kids and I really needed that back in my life so I started off with just some simple items that you would definitely find at home just like this and the results were shockingly beautiful Perfect? No. Beautiful? Yes. As a matter of fact, I've never seen a dot painting that I didn't think was absolutely gorgeous. You have got to give this a try. If you do, please let me know in the comment section below how it went. Or if you already dot paint, share with us why you love it. 
so many say it's addicting and it really is in the best way possible so share with us why you feel you're a, totally addicted to dot painting I have to be honest with you this was really difficult to um, record and paint at the same time because at one point there's wet paint around the whole bottle on all sides and you can't lay it down you know I couldn't stand it up and paint and get it on video so I don't know I had a difficult time recording this one but um, and when you're painting your bottle and you're just leaving it standing up it's gonna be a lot easier but yeah this was a little bit of a challenge for me a welcome to challenge I must say so I'm just going out and it looks kind of like a zipper on the back that's kind of cute and um, filling it in different size dots I fill in some of the spaces with smaller dots just like we did earlier and it's just about done I just take my toothpick and go through, fill in a little bit of the spacing. You could do this however you like, and you can even just leave it if you like it that way. Um, and I was just alternating the colors in no particular order. I didn't stay very consistent with the, um, with the order of paint colors or anything. I just mixed it up a little bit. And there it is, all dry. I let it dry. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and pop this in the oven and bake it if you use the proper paints, and that will make it more of a permanent bond to the bottle um, and washable. But if you do not want to do that, you don't have to. You can also let it air dry, like I said earlier, for right around a month, and it should be good to go. Well, I hope you love this tutorial, and if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Be sure to check out my other videos. I have 80 plus free dot painting lessons right here on YouTube, from beginner to advanced. Thanks so much for watching. See you real soon. Bye now.